Mike, this is a hell of a drop. Is this entirely down to people trying to avoid the new rates of tax? Um, significantly so. I think if you looked at March, which was up 8%, and you're saying that you're now down 20%, that's a significant shift. But remember, April is a relatively small month. It's about a quarter of what March was. So you can see an absolute movement of people bringing forward those purchases to avoid the increase in road tax, which clearly makes sense. And what proportion of motorists will be hit by these new rates of excise duty? Well, most motorists. I mean, the way the, the road tax is structured, you have a first-year rate and then you go to a, a different rate. Uh, up until the 1st of April, um, about two-thirds of new car buyers for that first year weren't paying any road tax. Um, that was probably inequitable. The government wanted to change it, um, so they've tried to spread it out a bit more. So basically most ca ca car drivers will be affected. And um, roughly how much extra will a motorist be paying in these new, new tax rates? Well, the, 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 there's again a difference between the first year and then for the subsequent years after. In first year things have gone up by, say, 10-15%. Then it moves to a flat rate of £140. Um, for, for drivers who were driving more fuel-efficient cars, that's a rise. Um, for those who are larger cars, it's, 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 it's closer to parity. But what is also in there is an increase on the most expensive cars. Those cars over £40,000 in value pay even more, hence that movement over the two months. Now, obviously, during the last five years or so, if, if not uh, longer than that, I mean, new car sales have been on an absolute tear. Was that previous rate of growth sustainable for much longer? Um, it, we were at an all-time record. Last year was the best year ever for new car sales, and that beat the previous record, which was the previous year. So at some stage, and, and it's also important to remember, and as your reporter mentioned there, we are still at historically high levels. So there is that demand there. Um, we expect over the course of the year more stabilisation. Um, perhaps over the, the full year, maybe a drop of about 5%. It really depends on consumer confidence, um, what happens in terms of inflation, how that flows through to the price of cars. I mean, the most stunning aspect of these statistics was the drop-off in diesel, 27%. I mean, is this category doomed? Um, again, you can, you, there's always dangers in looking at one particular month. Um, in March, we had the record ever number of diesel cars sold, and... Somewhat, uh, really? Really? somewhat weirdly, if you look at April, the proportion of diesel sales actually went up compared to March. So that is that just reveals that danger of looking at one, you know, one month in isolation. What we do see is um, there's still demand for diesel because it offers that fuel economy, which is often a driver of purchasing. There is some uncertainty around what's going to happen with the clean air zones, and we expect an announcement by government imminently. But what we think will happen is you know, what you see in London, that the new cars, the new diesels, which are so much cleaner than the old ones, are exempt from any of these measures. Have you been able to speak to Sadiq Khan about this? Because he's obviously one of those who's in the sort of forefront of this campaign against diesel. He is, and I, I don't think it's a specific campaign against diesel. What they want to do, rightly so, is address air quality and road transport does make a contribution to that. Um, the important thing to recognise is, you know, we all depend on road transport, whether it's for personal transport or delivery of goods, services, emergency services. So it'd be wrong just to penalise diesel because some of the vehicles, there is no choice in terms of, this, you know, HGVs, for instance. What we are seeing, though, is, you know, the, the investment by manufacturers to put ever cleaner technologies on the road, which will be part of the solution that we need on air quality in the urban towns and cities. Very briefly, Mike, what are your expectations for the rest of the year? Over the year, we think the market will probably, clearly will stabilise. This is an erratic two months, uh, you know, determined by these tax changes. Probably the market will be down slightly, maybe 4 or 5%, but in historical terms, that's still at a very, very high level. All right, Mike, we've got to leave it there. Thanks for joining me. Pleasure.